Opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to the Most High God. Given by the Most High God, all honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the ones looking in on the camera. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's open up to uh, John chapter 10, verse 1. <laughs> weird. Weird, so. <laughs> Is he talking to himself? He said, cock back when I go by it. What do you teach you that to teach? That is my boy. You like just like me. That ain't hilarious. That's all right. When you say that around me, I'm whooping his butt. Cause <laughs> what do you know about cocking his back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can thank you can thank your daddy for that. <laughs> it's a hard. Yeah. You supposed to be keeping everybody quiet, not making a whole bunch of noise. You got me. This is John chapter ten, verse one. Verily I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way. The same as a thief and a robber. He said, if you don't enter in through the door of the sheepfold, that means you're a thief and you're a robber. All right? Keep going. That's a parable that he's telling us. He'll explain it to us. But he that enter in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Mm -hmm. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. Mm -hmm. And he calls his own sheep by name and mm -hmm. leads them out. And when, he pull, and when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Mm-hmm. And the stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Mm -hmm. This parable spake Yahushua unto them, but they understood not what things they were, which he spake unto them. So he said that, he's like, he's talking about sheep. I don't, what is, why is he talking about sheep? They didn't know what he was talking about. Let's see. Then said Yahushua unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the he sheep. He said, I'm what? I am the door of the sheep. He said, I'm the door of the sheep. Right? He said, let me let me help y'all out. Y'all didn't get what I was talking about. Let me help y'all out. I'm the door of the sheep. Let's make this thing real clear. Right? If anybody gonna get to the Father, guess what I got? Oh, guess how they gotta get there? Do the door. Right through here. <coughs> if you try to go a side route, you try to go to the left, go to the right, you try to go out the window to get into the sheepfold, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna be the same as a thief and a robber. Your butt going to hell. He said the only way to get there is through him. You go up any other way. You think you there too. You go any other way. Your butt going to hell. Right? So that means that puts us in a position where we got to understand what it means to go through him. Right? What does it mean to go through the sun? That's what we try to learn every week. We try to learn what, what, what's required of the sun for us to go through him. Right? All he requires is that we obey him. That we do what he asks. All right? Do what he requests. Do what he, do what he commands. Right? He gives us a list of commandments. Right? It could be all summed up in love. Right? That's how the Christians would have taught us to it. Right? It's all summed up in love. And that's not, that's not a lie. That's true. Right? What happens is in that summation that we don't understand the details of it. Right? So in love, we understand that, well, we can't lie. Right? We can't cheat. We can't, we can't cuss. Right? We can't have vitriol against our brother. Right? We can't we can't uh we can't have we can't uh we can't uh fornicate. Right? We can't we can't uh, uh commit adultery. What else I got? I'm running out of stuff. Can't steal. Can't steal. Uh, I think, uh, I think you got Pretty much covered it. Can't be in Can't murder nobody. 
right? You can't be in sex. Yeah, you can't be in a denomination, right? You can't split yourself off and cause a division against God's people. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. You're going to sit here, so you're going to sit here and section yourself off, right? You're going to section yourself off and say, no, no, no. I'm not just those people. I'm this sect of God. That's crazy. That don't make no sense. You going to name it? It's one thing if other people do it. It's one thing if they one thing if they be like, no, nah, they not regular. You know what I'm saying? Even the Christians. You know what I'm saying? You know the Christians. Christians, they get together and you know what I'm saying? They have all their denominations. And then within their denominations, they have their little groups. And so they'd be like, yeah, I'm a Baptist. And then some other person that they disagree and say they're a Baptist, they'd look at him and be like, no, he's not no regular Baptist. He's this, this, another Baptist. And they don't really agree with it. The other Baptist, they don't really agree. They're like, I'm a regular Baptist. But so they will let some other Baptist call them something else. That's different, right? If we say, I'm a disciple of the Most High God, I'll obey the book. And somebody else come and be like, no, they not disciples. They Muslims. Then we don't pay these people. They Christians. We don't pay these people no darn mind. They running their darn mouth. But for you to sit here and say, no, I'm this. I'm a Lutheran. That's crazy. That don't make no darn sense. And you know what's cool? All these people, the Lutherans, the, uh, the, 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 uh, Lutherans, the Calvinists, and all these people, a lot of their leaders, a lot of people that started their stuff, they started off talking about, you know what? Don't, I don't want, you shouldn't be calling anything after my name. They started off, they started off with the right thing. Not necessarily all they teaching, but that aspect of it, it was right. They're like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Don't don't call it after my name. You know what I'm saying? You God's people. You know what I'm saying? So you look at it and you see how far people drift from, from the truth. Right? Don't get me wrong. I, I look at, I, I read about, you know what I'm saying, the Anabaptist groups and the, the Lutherans and all that stuff way back over there uh, across the sea before they came over. You know what I'm saying? I read about these, these guys and everything, and there's no doubt in my mind there was a true intention to get to the truth of the book. Right? They're Gentiles. They just, you know what I'm saying, they just, it, it's certain things, so much that you have to fight against, so much that you've been taught that's a lie that you have to kind of work through, and for a Gentile, they may not, it's a lot of stuff that may not even occur to him. Like, it may not occur that the Hebrews was actually the Africans. You know what I'm saying? Like, some of the some of the people in Africa, those those were the Hebrews. It may not even occur. That way, they have no reason for that to even come up in their brain in a lot of situations. You know what I'm saying? All you're dealing with is Catholics, you know what I'm saying? And you're dealing with, you know what I'm saying? You're dealing with, you know, the kings and all that. So it's like, that might be the furthest thing from your mind, and that little piece could be what is necessary to unlock so much of the understanding of the book. You know what I'm saying? So you, you operate off of all these assumptions, all these assumptions. And then so you're trying to, you're trying to explain stuff, trying to get it. You know the Catholics is wrong. They had that much right. They knew the Catholics was wrong. And then, you know what I'm saying, they, they come up with their theories. And their theories, you know what I'm saying, a lot of it, some of it was wrong. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of it, they like, don't call it after me. Don't call yourself no Calvinist. That don't make no sense. Don't call yourself a Lutheran just because my name is Luther. You know what I'm saying? So so all these different people, they say that, and then the people still come along and do it. They don't even obey the liars. Right? They don't even look, obey the people that teach them lies. That's what's crazy. Right? So we look at it, and we, 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 we try to put it in place and make sure it's simple. You know what I'm saying? Make sure it's simple in terms of what we need to get into the kingdom. Right? It's a lot of complex stuff in the book, but what we need to get into the king, kingdom, that thing ain't Right, I made a post today. You know what I'm saying? People can ask a whole bunch. Of, it's always people ask a question about the Bible. I get text messages. I get you know what I'm saying all these different things. People always have questions about the Bible. That happens. You know what I'm saying? But it always seems like none of the questions come down to what do I need to do to be saved. That rarely happens. That happens every now and again. But that rarely happens. Somebody text, what do I need to do to be saved? When I get that text, it's like I, right, I'm working with something. And so far, a lot of them things didn't pan out. But still, at least you started with the right mindset. Hopefully, most I got bring you in later on in life, right? But you look at it, somebody start off with, uh, what does it mean to be a Hebrew? You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that's, that's a cool question, but I'd rather you ask, what does it mean to be saved? You know what I'm saying? What does it, what does it mean to be righteous? You know what I'm saying? How do I be righteous? How am I forgiven of my sins? Like, if you had that focus, the rest of that stuff would fall in place. You know what I'm saying? We just have to have the focus that we're willing to do what the Most High God say no matter what, whether you're a Hebrew or not. 
right? What if you what if you found out you the one African slave, you know what I'm saying, one Hamite that got brought over with the slaves? You know what I'm saying? What is that? Is that gonna ruin you? Is that happening? If I found out right now that I'm the one out of my family come from the one single Hamite that got mixed up with the Hebrews. Which could be true. Watch your darn mouth. <laughs> right? If I found that out though, you know what I'm saying? Then what is that dude going to ruin me? Oh, never mind. I can't believe this. And I'm going to stop obeying? That's crazy. Right? That's crazy. Our mindset got to be, I'm a Hebrew, that's for sure. But even if I wasn't, the most I got is good enough. Right? Even if I wasn't, I heard the word, and I think it's beautiful that he brought his people out, called them from all the world. Even if I'm not one of them, he called them from all the world, gave them their land, they rebelled. He told them what was going to happen. He did exactly what he was going to say and then prophesied to rescue them in the end. That's a beautiful story, whether that's me or not. Right? That's a beautiful, darn story. Right? It's important that these people got that mindset and that we promote it. A lot of times they confuse us with, with these, you know, Afrocentric Hebrews. You know what I'm saying? These black power Hebrews. They don't confuse us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we proud of where we come from. Right? We proud of our culture. Yeah, we angry that our culture has been hidden from us. I'll take a Gentile that obey over a Hebrew that don't. Any Every day. day. Any day. Every day. Uh, right? Give me two Give me two Gentiles that obey. You know what I'm saying? Give me two more Gentiles that obey. <laughs> <laughs> you see that, right? bro? You look at this. You, it's, it's important that we look at it and... And maybe we, maybe, maybe I've not done a good job, right? Because people were, they contacted me with old messages, right? So that means I'm giving off that impression. Excuse me. I want you to obey. Your boy going to, I don't care. Look, grab, uh, grab Romans chapter two. We can get, we can clear this thing up real quick. Ain't going to take a whole lot of time either. It's Romans chapter two. Give me about verse, uh, I probably won't like verse nine, but. Start me out at about verse 3. It's Romans chapter 2. Give me about verse 3. Give me verse 4. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth lead to repentance. Right? Do y'all understand that? Do y'all understand what it just said? A lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people look at it, they do, you know what I'm saying? In the beginning, when we when we start off, we always say, any supernatural experience, whether you have a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any super a lot what we say in the beginning, a lot of people don't know every single sentence, everything that's said there. It's based off a book. I'm not just running. I'm not saying up here starting the same way every day to run my mouth. That Everything that's said there is based off a book. When we talk about any gift that you have, right, whether it be a gift of tongue, gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience, it can and will be used against you in the day of judgment. That's what he's talking about here. He said, do you despise the goodness of God? Right? In other words, what he's saying is you not obeying, but th things are still working out for you. That's what these Christians walk around and they praise God for all the time. You know, I am nothing but a sinner. They'll tell you, I am a sinner. I just, every day I sin. I have to repent every single day. But you know what? God has never left my side. Right? And they glory about that. And, and that's, a, that's a wonderful thing, right? What does that do in the end, though? But what does it do in the end? He's sitting there, he's telling you, do you despise the goodness of God? He's asking. From God's point of view, from our point of view, we say, God, thank you so much for being so good to me, even though I'm unworthy. Right? Which is a cool prayer when you're going to change. Right? When you had a mind like, I'm done with all that. I appreciate you giving me this opportunity to change. Thank you, and I'm done with it. That's the prayer that you're supposed to have. Thank you, God. I'm unworthy of your, your, your goodness. I'm, I'm going to get it right from here on out. You're not supposed to use that prayer if you have no intentions of changing. Right? If you if you gonna sit here and say, Thank you, God, I know I'm unworthy because of what I'm about to do, that's crazy. The way God look at that, we look at that as God is just so good to us. God is looking at that is you hate how good I am to you. You despise it. 
you don't, you don't want me to be good to you. Right? You get something to your kids, right? You get something to the kids, you give it to them, give it to them. They back, you give them another chance. You give them, you give them. What you gonna say to them? Oh, you want me to whoop your butt? Maybe that did me. You know what I'm saying? I tell my boss, oh, so you want me to get your butt? That's what you ask. I mean, you keep doing the same thing. I didn't get you earlier. You keep doing the same. You must want me to get your butt. That's how God looking at it. He good, good, good to us. We keep doing the same stuff or keep sinning. And he looking at it like, oh, so you despise. You hate the fact that I'm being good to you. You hate the fact that I'm being nice. You hate the mercy that I'm giving you. You hate the grace that the Christian talk about all the time. Right? This stuff is important. Keep going. He said, do you despise his goodness? And knowing that it's supposed to do what now? That the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. The whole point of him being good and having mercy, right? And having grace on our lives, what they call it. The whole point of it is to lead us to stop sinning. That's it. It's supposed to give us a space to stop sinning. So if we take that space that we got to stop sinning, we get outside of that space, what do you think happens at that point? That's a wrap. That thing done. You get outside of that space, you good. Right? Most of our God done. Hands wiped. He gives us a space of goodness. We bad. We sinning. We not living right. He give us that space to get it right. We don't know how long that space is. Just like the children of Egypt. I mean, uh, Egypt. Children of Israel. We is we is we walking through the wilderness. Most of our God popped up one day. It's like this ten times you you rebelled against me. We didn't know what ten times he was talking about. We didn't know he was keeping count. He just came up with that number, 10. We didn't know we were going to get 10 times from the first time that we rebelled. How we know it was going to be 10? We didn't. Just came out with 10. Same thing. We don't know what the time is going to be on this stuff. For some people, it's going to be like this. For other people, it's going to be like this. We can't look at the next. Another thing people do, you know what they do? They'll come up to you and they'll be like, you know what, Terrence? You can't be so hard on them. You got you to gotta have patience. You can't be beating you know, they accuse you. You can't be beating people up with the Bible, right? And then you try to tell them, well, I'm not beating them up. I just I just know how serious it is for us to obey. So I'm telling them, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what it is. You know what? But you, there was a time where you didn't obey. Terrence, do you remember that time when you didn't obey? You didn't learn it all in one day, right? God took his time. They start with, God took his time with you, right? And so they be trying to compare it to you. It's like that thing real nice, God did. And I appreciate how good he was. But now, am I supposed to assume that God going to give everybody the same time frame he gave me? What if this person ain't got that time frame? There's a whole lot of people that's dead right now that's not alive. They obviously didn't have the same time frame. So now, and you know what they tell you? If it's anything, if you flip it, and you say, you say, you say, you know what? This, if you say definitively, you know what? That bum ain't going to have no more time left. If he mess up this time, he's going to be a sinner. You know what they're going to say? You don't know what God can do. Right? <laughs> you, don't know what, you don't know what God time is. They tell you. Right? You flip that thing on this side, all of a sudden they know what God time is. All of a sudden we, if before we don't know. When we talking about the bomb, we don't know. We get talking about their friend though. Somebody they like. All of a sudden they know. Mm -mm, God, God, God will give them that time. It take everybody time. Okay. That thing don't make no sense. You know what patience is? Patience is not patience is not saying, well, I'm not going to say nothing to him this time. I'm just going to wait for him to come up. That's not patience. Patience, you know what patience is? Your butt need to repent. And then they don't do it. And the next time you see him, your butt still need to repent. That's patience. Patience is being there for him every time they need it. Right? It's not not telling them the truth. Patience is telling them the truth, and no matter what they do, you still there for them every time they need it in an appropriate way. Right? All this stuff got to be redefined. We haven't been taught all lies our whole lives. You, have y'all, how y'all thought about that? Our entire lives, we have been taught lies. Right? And then you take that thing back even further. All these people, our moms, our dads, their moms, their dads, and then on forth from that, have been taught lies. This book has been misrepresented to all of them. And now we have to come along and clean it up. I'm just talking to a Hebrew Israelite today. You know what I'm saying? He's talking about he talk, he, he talking to a sister. He's like, uh, he like, you know what I'm saying? You can't shave your beard. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 
they had they had a dude. It, it was a Christian pastor. He was preaching about you know some other stuff, and uh, he you know he was like, yeah, what he was saying was right, but you know what I'm saying he he need to grow his beard out. He ain't supposed to shave his beard. And so she told him she was like, well, no, nah, you can shave. You know what I'm saying? It's that another. She didn't go into details about the book. And you know what I'm saying? I didn't know if she was doing that on purpose, not going into detail, because she knows she's not about to be, not supposed to be teaching. So I jumped in. I was like, well, I appreciate the sister for not going in detail. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to jump in. So I broke it down. I was like, yeah, bro, this, that, another, da, da, da. I just kind of broke it down for him. And and one of the things I told him, I was like, don't really, I'm not, I'm not even really saying nothing. Because, you know, people get offended when you start correcting. So I'm, I'm not really even saying nothing against you. It's like we all been taught all these lies. And, you know, we, we like, we learn from Christianity. We found out Christianity was lying to us, so we overcorrect in Hebrew uh, it, it, as a Hebrew Israelite. You know what I'm saying? We try to connect back to our Hebrew culture, but what we do, we want to just be so opposite of Christianity that some of the stuff ain't really true. And Hebrews teach from that misunderstanding. So I was trying to let them know, like, you know what I'm saying? It ain't really even just like you, like it's all of us. You know what I'm saying? We just have to we have to muddle our way through this thing and figure it out and just be strict on the text. You know what I'm saying? But that's important. That stuff is true. It's like it's important for us to realize that. One, we come from a place. We come a long way, like in a short time. Even the Hebrew, honestly, even the Hebrew Israelites are teaching all these lies. We come a long way, like from, from being Christians, you know what I'm saying, and just being lied to. Like a lot of the Hebrew Israelites have made strides in a better direction. But are we going to be saved for a better direction? No, nah, that thing got to be right. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool to be like, oh, yeah, okay, well, it's better. But better ain't going to cut it if you're not there. You know what I mean? And so sometimes that can be frustrating. You know what I'm saying? Feel nitpicky. But nitpicky is what's going to get you in. Right? Sometimes we just got we to gotta turn that thing around. Like, oh, what's going to get me in there? Nitpicking at every little detail, that's going to get you in. What's not going to get you in is saying, ah, nah, we can let that ride. When the book says you can't let it ride, that thing ain't going to get you in. This is Romans chapter 2, verse, uh, what, 4? Or despise thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads, that, leads thee to repentance. Uh huh. But after thy hardness and impotent heart, treasures up thyself. Impotent wrath. heart didn't mean that thing. You can't get through it. That's a hard heart. Impenitent, impenitent, yeah, impenitent heart. Treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So now you see why it makes sense why I say no matter what the experience you have, right? Whether you got the gift of tongue, gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience, it can and will be used against you in the day of uh, judgment. What do you think it's saying right there? He said, do you despise the goodness of God? Don't you know that that lead you, leadeth you to repentance, right? If you don't repent, don't you know that you're just treasuring up? Read it again. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So you just moseying along through life, sending your way up, right? Most high God still being good to you, still get the new car, still get the gift of tongues, still get the gift of prophecy, and you still get you get visions from God, right? Back when, back when I was growing up, people in my family was like, oh, God showed me this. Oh, I had a dream last night. You know, like they get these visions from God. They get to see stuff. They see visions of demons and all this stuff. All this stuff they see. All that's a blessing. Right? All that's a blessing to be connected to a supernatural side of the world that a lot of people don't see. All that's a blessing. And then they still sin. Like you see a demon. You see the devil talking to you in your in your dream. And that don't stop. That don't make you like, let me, all right. Everybody relax. Let's get this together. All my life, I didn't heard the story from my family. I, I used to be sitting back and like, dang, I don't want that to happen, but it sure would be nice for something to happen. That thing would mess me up. Most I got knew, don't show me no dark. I used Demons. to see that thing in my sleep. Yeah, yeah, I remember you telling me. You know what I'm saying? That stuff ought to make you, that that ought to make you like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't understand back in our day because we didn't know nothing, right? We didn't know nothing. But once you come across that information, that thing ought to make you like, all right, I have seen some things. I think they have a sister. It's the reason why. <laughs> right? We look at this stuff. This stuff, we've been in doctrines of demons. Why do you think this stuff was on our people? We've been in doctrines of demons. We've been learning from demons. Posing themselves as Christians. Right? Teaching their, they, they up there, they up there, they got multiple wives and call themselves pastors. That's crazy. 
crazy. That's crazy. Right? All this stuff is treasuring up wrath for us. Right? Whole time, most high God just like, yep, I gave you that and you still send it. Okay. Gave you that and you still send it. Just treasuring up wrath. Keep going. Who will render to every man according to his deeds. Mm hmm. To them he gonna render to every man according to his prayers. His deeds. He gonna render to every man. Every man gonna get it according to like how he feels inside his heart. His deeds. Go out there. What he does. That's how every person gonna get it. I don't care how many times you can got on your knees and cry to God. That thing real good if you don't sin no more. You. I mean, you cry out to God. God to hear that thing. If you don't sin no more, that thing real good. I mean, times you cry out to God, you sit there sinning the next day. That don't make any sense. He's not giving you nothing according to your prayer. He's giving it to you according to your deeds. Even your prayer got to line up with your deeds. Keep going. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Uh-huh. But unto them that are continuous, contentious, but to them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey and do not what? Do not obey the truth. Okay. But obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. To who first? Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil. But, but to who first? Of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. So now, as we learn that we Hebrews, and we glory in that, you do realize that when the punishment comes. That thing coming to your butt first. You can run your mouth all you want. You can be a Hebrew all you want. The Gentiles are going to have a chance to see, oh, we messed up and repent based off of your punishment. Y'all think it's over? Y'all think, y'all think, y'all think, y'all think 20, 2019 come along and we just going to mosey up out of here? We don't know what the Most High God going to do. Our butt might still be in America. You don't know what he's going to do. We have no idea what he's going to do. Right? Y'all see here, glory, everybody glory feeling like is we, we in a good place, everything happening? Speaking to Gentiles like they crazy? Okay. They're going to they gonna have a chance to correct it. They're going to see, they see Hebrew getting punished by God. And they're going to be like, oh, that is the real God. Let me, let me straighten this thing up real quick. And they're going to walk right into the kingdom. While your butt going to be sitting outside. All because the oracles of God was given to you. Oracles of God were given to our people. We already have a head start. So guess who is going to come? If the word was given to us first, I wonder where the punishment is going to go first. Hmm. Let's see. If the spirit landed on us first in Jerusalem when Yahushua was walking around, I wonder... Where the punishment is going to go first. Hmm. Most I got is fair. Alright? Got to go through the door. You know, you go any other way. You get to, you get to talking about, oh, well, you know, you got you to gotta keep the law to be saved. That's a lie. You ain't got to keep no law to be saved. That ain't what Yahushua would taught you. If you believe that, then you're trying to go off of what Moses taught you. Which is cool. Go off of what Moses taught you. But just understand, Moses didn't teach you about entering into no kingdom. Right? I, I just want you to know what your goal is. If your goal is to, I don't know, be cursed, go with what Moses taught you. Because your brother already condemned under the law. You already sinned. Right? The law ain't, ain't going to teach you how to get it back. You ain't got no priest to do a sacrifice for you. What are you going to do? Right? I mean, I'm just trying to figure out under what under what law are you going to enter into the kingdom? It's not going to happen. Hebrews don't like when I get to talking like this. They say I sound Christian. Right? That's my point. I don't care how I sound. I want to sound like the truth. I don't have time to be trying to be anti-Christian at the expense of the truth. I'm anti-Christian all day. For the lies. I'm anti-Hebrew Israelite too. For the lies. Anti-Muslim. For the lies. If a Muslim woke up telling the truth, what I'm going to say, you lying? That's crazy. That don't make no sense. I'm not against a person. I'm against lies. I'm not against a group. I'm against lies. I don't care nothing about none of this stuff. I just want to make it into the kingdom. I want to I wanna tell my people what they need to do to make it into the kingdom. 
Where we was at last week? Well, last week was Passover. Grab a number for me, chapter 20. So remember, last couple weeks, we've been dealing with the children of Israel, and they were inside of the wilderness. Most I got, got mad after they rebelled against him. He called it the ten time. All right? And the people of Israel, they, they, uh, they complained that they didn't have bread, didn't have meat. You know what I'm saying? They said it was better in Egypt. Um, the Most High God sent the men over to scope out the land. Twelve of the heads of the tribe. Amongst them was Caleb and Joshua, son of Nun. Name would be Yahushua, son of Nun. Sent over. They looked through the land. They saw it was some big jokers over there, right? It was a big. It was a lot of big fellas, right? They were like, ah, uh, we like black grasshoppers, and they say like, we ain't gonna be able to get this thing done. Most High God got upset with that. Because they hurt, they, they hurt the heart of the people, right? The people was like, let's do it until they told them, like, mm, that thing ain't about to happen. All right? So then the people got discouraged. So you have 10 out of 12 that went over to scope out the land, gave a, a negative message. The other two, which is Joshua and Caleb, they gave a positive message. Like, no, nah, God gave it to us. Let's do it. All right? Most High God said, because all the people was discouraged, that they would stay there and they would be in the wilderness for 40 years. And all the people that were numbered in the beginning of numbers, in numbers one, that was 20 and over, anybody who was numbered as part of that number would end up dying in the wilderness within that 40 years. All right? So then the people immediately started to rebel. So remember, we read about Korah, we read about. Uh, we read about a few other, a couple rebellions after that. And then Most High God had to prove out who was chosen as the priest. And then he had to put the, the rod, and the rod had the bloom, and it was Aaron's rod. And so, yeah, all that happened. Um, now we're getting into Numbers chapter 20. So just remember that you have a huge group of people who just learned that they're going to die in the wilderness. Right? I just want, because I don't want this type of stuff to be lost. You have to understand, imagine how people feel when they're told that something definitely negative is like they don't have hope. Right? What's one of the things that we think people will start, you know, dealing with when you feel, when you tell them something like that, like you don't have hope, but they want to believe they do have hope? Lies. Huh? Lies. Lies. They start believing lies. Right? I mean, right now, if we, were to, if we were to go and tell somebody, we go to a Christian church, we talk about blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, right? And somebody somebody just stood up in the middle and just like, uh, I blaspheme the Holy Ghost, right? Just say something crazy, right? And then afterwards, it'd be like, you know what? I'm sorry. Forgive me. Right? If we walk in that church, and they happened in the middle of church, everybody saw it, and we were like, oh, that person's going to hell. They can't be forgiven for that. That thing going to hell. How many people in that church do you think would be like, no, well, you never know? And who do you think they're going to believe? Who do you think they're going to rock with? They're going to rock with the church. Because the church is telling them, you still have a chance. They're giving them hope. We tell, even though ours is according to the book, it don't give hope. So that's tougher to believe. So why do you think they're going to look at us? <laughs> crazy people. You crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. You a hater. All these different things. That's how they're going to see us. So think about that as we read through the rest of this time in the wilderness. You got a group of people that sees Moses like that. Right? That sees Aaron. When Aaron and Miriam, they're about, they about to die off in this chapter. But you know what I'm saying? They, that's how they're going to see him. Because you're telling us it's no hope. But we can come all this way and we ain't heard from God directly. Sure, we heard, we saw a lot of this stuff, and it all lined up with what you're saying, but I just want to believe something different, right? So that's what we're dealing with. Yeah. It's Numbers chapter 20, verse 1. Then came the children of Eve, Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month, and the people abode in Kadesh. And Miriam died there and was buried there. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. Mm -hmm. And the people trolled with Moses and spake, saying, 
Would God that we have died with our brethren when our brethren died before the Lord. And why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us in into this evil place? Mm -hmm. It is no place of seed or of figs or of vines or of pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. Mm -hmm. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak unto ye, speak ye unto the rock, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. Mm -hmm. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. Mm -hmm. Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels. He said, Hear now, ye rebels. Must we fetch you water out of this rock? He said, Must we fetch you water out of this rock? Keep going. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. All right, now if we stop right there, what do we see wrong? If we stop right there, a lot of us are not going to be able to find nothing wrong. We're going to be like, all right, God told Moses to get water out of the rock. Moses smote the rock twice, water came out of it. Mission accomplished. That's how it looked. Let's keep reading. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. This Just is like that. Quick. After Moses, Moses, it looked from the surface, it looked like Moses did everything he is supposed to do. Most like God said, you know what? People is, you know, they fighting against you. I'm not even, even going to get their butt this time. I tell you what. Take your staff, hit it up against the rock, you know what I'm saying? At the end up against the rock, you know what I'm saying? Water gonna come out of it. So Moses came, took the staff. Well, Aaron took the staff, right? Hit it up against the rock. Moses was like, Must we fetch you water from this rock? Hits twice, water comes out of it. Looked like mission accomplished. But Moses, our God said, Because you did not believe me to sanctify me to the people, right? What he's saying to him is, sanctify. Sanctify means what, brother? What does saint mean? Or holy? Set apart. It means to set, set apart. Set apart, right? So same word, pretty much, um, in, in the Hebrew. So sanctify, to set me apart. Because you didn't believe me to set me apart. Right? So if you like, if you read that, because you didn't believe me to set me apart, then we have to go back. What did Moses do to not set him apart? So let's let's read it again and let's try to figure out where God was not set apart at that point. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Here now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of must this who? rock? Must we? <laughs> Moses, Moses I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Me and God about to, we about to, you know what I'm saying, get this water out for y'all. Right? Moses looking like he is comrade. He is like, oh, no, you didn't set me apart when you did that. You act like you and Aaron was running the show. And because of that, the Most High God said, you didn't believe me. This is Moses now. This is Moses who just split the Red Sea, who made manna come down from heaven, who had mouths of darn quail surrounding the camp so everybody could eat. All right? This is Moses who, who stood there while the ground opened up and swallowed people whole. All these things Moses did at the word of the Most High God. And then Moses, God comes and say, you didn't believe me? This same Moses? Now it's important. Now, this, these type of things, this gives you a definition of what believe is. Right? Because without this, we wouldn't have any reverence. When people say, just believe, we wouldn't have any reverence and be like, mm, it's deeper than that. Deeper than what you're thinking right now. This is belief. God said you didn't believe him. Why didn't you believe him? Because you said we. Instead of saying the Lord. That's simple. For us. For in, our, in our mind, it's like, oh, that wasn't even, it's just a slip of the tongue, not even a big deal. For God, he said, oh yeah, for that, don't even worry. Appreciate you getting the water for the people. 
For that, don't even worry about it. You ain't going to see the land. Neither one of y'all going to see the land. He said, y'all not going to see the land based off of that. Right? It's those type of things where, look, this is what Yahushua is talking about. He said, there's no other way to get to the Father except through him. You got to go through the door. You can't, I mean, you can't go all the way to the door and at the very last minute step to the side and go through the window. You can't break the window, open the door from the inside, and then walk through the door at that point. No. You got to go through the door. That's the only way to do it. Anything else is going to have your butt on the outside. And that's what it, it, it's, it's a very strict and straight road that we got to walk. Right? We can't just do whatever we want to do. Moses couldn't do whatever. We, where would we get the idea that we can just do whatever we want to do? Where would that come from? What examples do we have of that in the book? Nowhere. Yet that's what they teach us. They teach us no matter what you do, God will love you more nor less. All this stuff we have to clean up. We have to go and just kind of sweep out all this mess and say, no, nah, this is what the books say. Let's get back to it. It'll make more sense. The Bible don't make sense to people right now. They can run their mouth and try to act like it do. The Bible does not make sense to these people. And, and the reason why it doesn't make sense is because half of what they believe is lies. Once, it, once you just start getting all those lies out, it's confusing. It's real confusing when somebody tells you the truth about the Bible and you still hold on to the lies. That's the worst. Because then it really don't make sense. Because you still thinking like, okay, I still want to hold on to I can do whatever I want to do and still be saved. Yet somebody is telling me I have to stop sinning. I thought it was impossible to stop sinning. But you saying it has to. Ah, I don't get it, right? So all that's frustrating because it's like two different things are opposing each other in your brain and you're trying to figure it out. But once you get rid of all the lies and be like, okay, let me just start fresh. What does the Bible say? It makes sense. Like, it was so liberating for us. When we sit here, we read it like, it's right there. It's been saying it the whole time. Right? It's tough because it's like, oh, well, that made, that made my life real tight. You know what I'm saying? Make, make life real tight. I can't, you know what I'm saying? I was kind of surviving off of the wiggle room, get rid of a lot of that. You know what I'm saying? But the Bible makes sense. It's difficult in the sense I got to be on a tightrope now, but the Bible makes sense. Once you get there, the tightrope is easy. Once you trust it. It's like, I know this type of, it's going, to, it's going to life, right? The only part now I got to worry about is me following this book. I'm not confused about what direction should I go. It's no direction. Straight ahead, right? Straight ahead. All that choosing, all that out of it. It's simple now. But you just got to balance. That's it. You got a lot of distraction coming at you. But it ain't no, it, you don't have to worry about, do I go this way or that way? Should I do that? I tell people all the time. They ask me questions. I just don't know if I should accept this job. Do you want the job? Accept it. You think it real simple. When you believe a book and you trust it, it's real simple. You don't have to wait. You do whatever you want to do. Just don't sin. How much more simple is that? You do whatever you want to do as long as it don't cause you to sin. And as long as it don't cause your brother to sin. Right? That makes life terribly simple. You know what the hard part is? Turn away from sin. Right? Turn away from sin. That's the hard part. Proverbs 14, 12. Seen color purple? Please. Ain't Oprah in it? The movie? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know what you're talking about. What? Oh, what movie? But I don't know. I've seen color purple like barely, like half of it. Wow. I don't like those type of movies. What's the? Uh, What's that girl name? Like... I'm gonna find out what movie it is. Somebody yeah. online. When somebody, we on Facebook now. You know, Facebook. Facebook know everything. Somebody gonna tell me what movie it is. It's guys. a black girl. Black girl. I think Oprah was in the movie. It's a black girl like this. Yeah, my sister know. We used to make fun of that thing all the time. What is she doing? She thirsty? Like she can't talk? What? She had a no. Yeah, I think she is. Uh, I think she's a little slow. I can't remember what the movie is about. 
I think she's a little slow. You know what I'm saying? She's somebody's sister. She's scratching her neck. Yeah, that was hilarious, though. We used to laugh at that thing all the time. All right. This is uh, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. What does the book say? Fourteen twelve. You mean thirteen twelve? What you trying to say? It ain't no fourteen Wait, in there. Fourteen twelve. Fourteen don't even go to twelve. What'd it go to? Eight. Seven. Go to seven. Oh, I'm in song. <laughs> Good gracious. Sorry. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. There is a way which seems right unto a man. If you ask a man, let me tell you, he's going to be like, ah, you know what, I got the right way. Right? If you ask us, there's always something that feels right, seems right. A lot of times that's one of the things that give us a little hold up about the Bible too. It just don't feel right. It don't feel right that God say that a person is going to go to hell and it's an abomination because they gay. Just because they, they have, like, a certain type of person that they love. Like, that just, it doesn't feel right. Like, it feels wrong. Like, they can't help it. Right? Like, a lot of that stuff, we look at it and be like, mm, just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right to say a man marries a woman, makes a bad choice, and then gets a divorce, and then he falls in love with another woman, and that's a dope. Like, it just, it, honestly, it just doesn't feel right. Right? So we look at these things and we, you know, we base it based off of how we feel. Let's look at the book. There's a way that seems right unto a man. Thank you, baby. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Let me tell you something. You can go off of how you feel all you want. Let me tell you where you're going to end up. Dead. Your butt ain't coming back from now. Right? We got to get feelings out of it. Get how it seems out of it. That thing got to come strictly from the book. I mean, I just don't believe that God would do that. God knows my heart. I'm going to tell you what I don't believe. I just don't believe that the man is going to come here doing anything different from what he said in his book. <laughs> Let me tell you what I believe. That's just what I, I, I don't believe that you're going to be right in this one. I just don't believe you right now. You know what I'm saying? That's how I go. This book. Right? We got to go with the book. All right? Go to, uh, go to uh, Proverbs 21 2. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 2. After that, we're going to get Jeremiah 17. It's Proverbs chapter 21, verse 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, mm -hmm. but the Lord pondereth the hearts. So think about what that's saying. It's saying every way of a man is right in his own eyes. Is that not what we see every day? Most, won't somebody come up with a justification for everything that they do? You can get to the point now, people don't, I don't regret what I went through in my past. You know why? Why? Because it brought me to where I am today. Right? So everything they've done, even when they know it's wrong, is still right because it brought them where they are. And they ain't even in the right place now. I mean, I'll be looking people tell me, I'll be like, what's so, what's so special about where you are now? Why are you so proud of that? Your butt still got a long way to go from my estimation. I'm just saying. Right? But that's what we've been taught. Don't have no regrets. And justify the things that we do. Right? The only reason I did it is because of this, that, and other. What you want me to do? Right? I, I had to do it this way. Well, at the time, I was thinking this. That's cool. All, that, all that's cool. At the end of the day, though, you got to admit that you was wrong. And then you got to change your way. But the book say every way. Say it again. Read it again. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, 
But the Lord pondereth the hearts. The Lord pondereth the hearts. Some people think pondereth the heart. You know, they, they feel like, you know what I'm saying, I gave them a little shape. That's why I call, I call Jeremiah 17. Let's grab uh, Jeremiah 17. All right, no. You say pondereth the heart. These Christians feel like, oh, okay. Whoa. All right. Got a little wiggle room. No, 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 no. That book say heart. You know, I got to get that thing out your mind. Ain't no wiggle room in heart. Books start talking about the heart. That thing get a lot more tight. You know what I'm saying? You don't even know. You feel like it's wiggle room, but really it's not. It get real strict of God looking at your heart. The heart is deceitful above all things. And it's Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9? Yeah. It's Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. Let's look at it. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So who pondering his heart? Because he just said, who can know it? You can't know your heart. Right? So it says it's wicked and it's desperate. Right? Desperately wicked and deceitful, I mean. Right? Above all things. Who can know it? Let's see who pondering on it. I, the Lord, search the heart. Uh-oh. He said, I, the Lord, I'm pondering on that thing. I'm searching that thing. What up? I try the reins. He said, I try the reins. He's it's like a horse. You know what I'm saying? You're on a horse. You got to strap. You know what I'm saying? You got to make sure that thing tight. He said, I try to make sure that thing real tight. Make sure everything in place. All right? Keep going. Even to give every man according to his ways. Even to do what? Give every man according to his ways. So why do you think God is pondering on the heart? To give you according to your what? Ways. And because according to the you. fruit of his doings. Because he going to give it to you according to what your butt been doing. So now if we think back to Proverbs chapter 21 verse 2, that make a little bit more sense to us. He said every way. That a man does is right in his own eyes. But the end there, I mean, but but uh, but the Lord pondereth the heart. So the most high God is looking at your heart, and he's looking at all the ways that you thought was right, and he said, okay, based off of what you did, your butt going to hell. This book is real simple. We can line this thing up real nice. All it takes for somebody to look at it and be like, you know what? What do I have to do to be saved? Grab for me uh, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse uh, 9. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 9. Is that what I want? I don't feel right for some reason. Jeremiah, that's what I wrote down, though. It's Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 9. Should be the old pass. For thus has the Lord of hosts said, How ye down trees, hew ye down trees, and cast them out against Jerusalem. This is the city to be visited. She is holy oppression. In the Jump midst down a couple of her. That was nine. Give me about verse eleven. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary. Verse and thirteen. Man. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest, everyone is given to covetousness. Everyone is given to covetousness. Give me verse fifteen. Were they ashamed when they committed abomination? Ah, this is it. Okay. Give me, uh, uh well, I'll start back. Let's, let's just do uh, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 15. It should be the next verse. Well. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No. They were not uh, They were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. In the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, says the Lord. Uh-huh. Thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. He says, stand ye in the ways and see. And ask for the old paths. He said, ask for the old paths. Everybody trying to do something new. All right? Everybody trying to do something new. Books say, ask for the old paths. You know what they say about our book? It don't apply for people living today. That's an ancient document. It don't apply. Our mindset is all messed up. The book is telling us, ask for the old path. We should be looking for what people used to do. Right? Not for what people going to be doing or what people doing today. Whereas now people are looking for, what's a new way to do it? Right? Ask for the old paths. Keep going. Ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Mm -hmm. And walk therein. And ye shall find rest for your souls. If you do that, you'll find rest for your souls if you walk in the old path. But they said we will not walk therein. And that's it. That's a choice. All right? That's a choice that people were making. Let's get back into Numbers. It's Numbers chapter 21. 
the rest of uh, the rest of chapter twenty, you have um, uh, at the end of chapter twenty, Aaron dies. Um, so the Most High God, you know, what I'm saying, took Aaron. Moses haven't died yet, but you see that Moses' brother and sister died now. So now we left with only Moses in the land, or to to take us to the land. And he already told Moses that he is not going to see the land himself. So this is uh, Numbers chapter 21. We can start at verse 1. And when the and when King Arid the Canaanite, mm -hmm. which dwelt in the south, heard, heard tell that Israel came by the way of the spies, then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. I'm going to try to draw right here. I can't draw, so don't make fun of me. But look at it, it's like, you know what I'm saying, this is like the tip of Africa, you know what I'm saying, you got, you know what I'm saying, where the Red Sea is, going like this, you know what I'm saying, and then this is, this is the uh, Arabian Peninsula, it's really Egypt, so this is Egypt right here, you know what I'm saying, this is the, 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 what, northeast part of Africa, and this is the desert, this is the Red Sea, so we would have crossed, and we would have been right here. Up here is Israel. All right, so Israel's up here. Um, let's draw a border. So this is going to be Israel. But right now it's called Canaan, all right? This right here is going to be, I think, Edom. Then you're going to have Moab. You got all types of stuff right here, right? So we've been dwelling kind of around this area and in this area, right? We are now about to come up. We are near these people. Remember, we sent some people up to spy out the land a little while ago. So now, you have people from here seeing us now, and they're about to try to get at us. All right? So let's hear about it. And Israel vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. All right? So we asked, we were like, if you can take us against this king and we win... We'll get rid of everything they got. All right? Keep going. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. Mm -hmm. And he called the name of that place Hormah. And they journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. All right? And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loathes this light bread. Mm -hmm. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the All Lord right. said, So the Most High God put serpents against them because they complained again. So he's like, all right, I got something for y'all butts. So he sent the serpents out. The serpents bit them. Start killing their butts. It was the fiery serpents or poison serpents. So start killing their butts. Right? Then they start praying. It's like, all right, get these serpents up off of us. What does that sound like? We sin and then we what? Repent. We say we repent. We pray. Right? We sin and then we turn from it. Right? So most of all, got our butts. Then we turn from that thing. We're like, all right, sorry. All right? Sorry, let's fix it. Then let's see what happened. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looks upon it, shall live. Right? So the Most High God told Moses that he didn't make a fiery serpent. Right? So he had to make pretty much an a, a image of a serpent. Right? Keep going. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it on a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bit, had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. All right? So then, after the people got bit, if they look and they see that serpent that Moses made, the brass version of it, then he'll be healed. All it took is you had to just look at this serpent, right, that Moses made. If you did that, you will be healed. Right? So that's how the people ended up being in the position where they were healed and they were no longer plagued. This is what happened when people repented. They turned away from it. Like, okay, let me stop. Moses said, okay, for those of y'all who want to stop, this is what we're going to do. Because all the people were there crying out to the Most High God about it. So the Most High God came through and helped them, even though it was his punishment. But just notice that how the Most High God, he puts the punishment on you 
and then your you 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 back off, right? Right? You get to a point you like, ah, no, I can't do it. Then after that, the Most High God is the one who takes the punishment off, right? And He heals you, right? Same thing that that was Isaiah to tell you: Give it light and take it away. Right? The light and the darkness. Everything. He's the source of everything. That's why it don't make no sense when these people be spending all their time getting mad at, at the devil. Right? I mean, it just I just don't see no reason that you should be running your mouth to the devil. That just don't make any sense. Satan, get behind me. You know, that's what that's what y'all Shua's supposed to be doing. That's what the angel's supposed to be doing. Your buddy ain't got no business talking about Satan get behind me. Satan ain't got nothing to do with what you're doing. There's no reason why you should be having any direct conversation. If Satan did anything to you, it's because the Most High God let him. So guess who you should be talking to? Why well, I'm going to talk to the worker if I, if I can talk to the boss? That just don't make any sense. Right? Especially if the boss is telling me, hey, if you got an issue, talk. If, you, if the boss, okay, I'll go into an establishment, right? And somebody, you know what I'm saying, suppose somebody, you know what I'm saying, I walk in there, everybody doing what they're supposed to do. But if one person that just seemed to me ain't doing what they're supposed to do. And the boss already walked in, he said, hey, when you're in the store, if you have any issues, just come to me. What does it look like? I go up to the person that's doing something wrong. You should be doing this and that. That wouldn't make sense, would it? Now that the boss already told me, if you got an issue, come to me. You go right to the boss. You got an employee over there working. Guess what the boss going to tell us in this case? Yeah, no, nah, that's what I told him to do. That's what I told him to do. I just wanted to make sure you were doing you as, what you were supposed to do. He's following me around the stove. Yeah, that's his job. That's his job to follow you around the stove. All right? I just want to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Oh, okay. No problem, then. We good. That's how it should be. Devil, no problem for us. That thing good. I mean, we understand how he worked. We know what he after. We know what he here for. Most like God gave us the lowdown, all of it. All right, he doing what he's supposed to do. Let me do what I'm supposed to do now. All right? So the most high God, he'd give it to you. All right? He'd give you the punishment. After that, he'd take that thing right up off. All right? Grab uh, John chapter 3 for me. John chapter 3, give me verse 10. This is John chapter 3, verse 10. Yahshua answered and said unto him, Are thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. Mm -hmm. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall ye believe if I, if I tell you heavenly things? Watch what he says. And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, uh -huh. even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. He said what now? As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. This is Yahushua talking. Now, mm -hmm. he said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. I don't know what he could be talking about. That's what we just read. Moses made a brass serpent. The people got bit by the serpent. If they look at this brass serpent, guess what? They got healed. So now Yahushua, he coming back. And he says, the same way that Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness, what happens? Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He said, I'm going to mess around and have to be lifted up in that same way. So immediately, us knowing the history, what does that mean for us now? He gives life to those who look upon him. It means that the Most High God sent the serpent after us. And now he lifting a man up that we can be healed. The whole thing, he just, the, he's lining this up. Y'all probably didn't notice that when y'all read it. Right? That's what y'all should tell. Everybody read that. Y'all probably didn't notice it when you read it. This was talking about me. Is what y'all should say. It's talking about y'all sure. Right? When you read, when we just read that, did any of us think about y'all sure when that happened? No. We just looking at, oh yeah, Moses, serpent, brass serpent, yeah, good, good. We didn't think about y'all sure. And if we did, because we already we already read this and we, we already made the connection. Right? But if your first time reading that, you're not going to think about y'all sure. That's what the revelation of the gospel is about, showing us how the the the, the scriptures is talking about Yahushua. Right? Watch what he say. This is why people get John 3.16 wrong all the time. This is why they don't know what they're talking about. Right? Because we know what he's talking about. He's talking about history. 
But watch this. Watch how this changes the way you look at John 3.16 all the way. He said, as the serpent was raised with Moses, so, so must the Son of Man be raised. So must the Son of Man be lifted up. Uh -huh. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that... Oh, he so that changes it. Son. For God so loved the world. For God loved the world like so. <coughs> right? God loved the world the same way that he loved the Israelites in Egypt. I mean, I'm sorry, in uh, the wilderness. That changes how you look at things. Because guess what happened to the Israelites that was in the wilderness? Anybody that was over 20. All they but dead. Right? That changes how you look at things. People will look at that as a blanket statement no matter what you say. Right? When the Most High God look at it, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to tell you the same way that that serpent was lifted up, God loved the world the same way to give him that opportunity. Let's keep going. For God that so loved he gave the world, his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh huh. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Mm -hmm. He that believes on him is not condemned. Uh -huh. But he that believes not is condemned already. Uh -huh. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Uh -huh. And this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Mm -hmm. For everyone that does evil hates the light. Neither comes to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. Mm -hmm. But he that does truth comes to the light. That his deeds may be made manifest that they are rotten God. If you do good, you come into the light. All right? It's when, it's when you're not doing good that people start having the issue. Start ducking and hiding. Right? Don't want nobody to know. It's only when you're not doing good. All right? As long as we're doing good, we can be confident before God. We can be confident before our brothers. We can lead a man or a woman in, into, into righteousness if you're a man is. All right? As a woman, you can lead your, your, your children and the, and the women into righteousness. All right? It's just all upon us. The Most High God has done this part. Christians to tell us, give it to God. All right? Let God handle it. And what that suggests is, God didn't do his part yet. All right? If, if our job is to give it to God and just let God do it, just, I mean, sometimes you just got to let God. Ain't that what they tell us? All right? If that's our job is to let God, then if we don't make it, who fault is that? Yeah, buddy. It's your own fault. If I thought, if I'm like, okay, look, I'm just, all I'm supposed to do is let God, right? So then I'm letting God, whatever that really means. I'm letting God. I feel like I'm letting God. So guess how I'm going to feel if I don't make it? God let me down. God dropped the ball. Lord, I wasn't supposed to do nothing. It was supposed to be you. I said my lazy butt here and I didn't do nothing just like I thought I wasn't supposed to do. Right? So then God must have dropped the ball. They put it on God. Why do you think so many people get mad at God? Right? Why do you think so many people would be like, you know what? I can't believe that God let this happen in my life and they just get frustrated with God. Because we've been taught it's on God. He's supposed to do it. No, 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 no. You know when the man was on the cross, you know what he said? It's finished. He did his part. He said... We good. Then guess what he went up? He went up to the top and guess what he did? <laughs> guess what he did? Sent the Holy Ghost. He said it, but down. Book said he sat down where? On the right hand of the Father. Took a darn rest. All that work he been doing. First he took a little nap. Three days, three nights. He like, all right, let me get back up and finish this. You know what I'm saying? I talk to these folks. He talks to them for 40 days. Right? On the 50th day, Holy Spirit came. 41st. Huh? The 41st day? Oh, no, he, no, he talked to people for 40 days, then he went up to sit, sit at the right hand. Right, on, the, the 50th, on the 50th day, yeah, the Holy that's Spirit right, came. That's right, that's right. Right? He said, up there and take a rest. I'm good. He said, I'll watch whatever happens. I did what I'm supposed to do. I'll watch from here. Holy Spirit taking care. I'll watch from here. He done. Guess who it's on now? Us. And our part is easy. You know what we got to do? Just obey the man. If we obey the man, then we've done our work. 
we don't obey the man, then we letting ourselves down. That thing ain't got nothing to do with him. He still did what he is supposed to do. Right? Any questions? Next week we'll get into uh kind of get into the to the rest of uh numbers twenty one. <laughs> And then uh, we'll probably have to talk about Balaam. Balaam and Baal. Uh, from, uh, where is it? Baal, Baal Peor? Was it? Baal of Peor. All right. Balaam of Peor. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get into him. And we'll talk about, you know what I'm saying, uh, talk about stumbling blocks. You know what I'm saying? How, how, how indirectly we can sin against our brothers or sin against other people. And, and how that how that can be a lot of times just as bad or even worse, especially if we're doing it on purpose, doing it for gain. So we look at all that and uh, keep trekking on through. Eventually, we'll get out of the wilderness. Seems like we've been in the wilderness for forever, right? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Uh, eventually, we get out of the wilderness, you know what I'm saying? Technically, we almost done. We ain't got that much time left. You know what I'm saying? We'll wrap it up, and we can, uh, we'll get into the land. We'll see how the land is divided out, you know what I'm saying? And uh, start talking about, you know, what's next, Judges. You got to get through Joshua first. And you got to get through Judges. And well, what's after that? Ruth. Ruth. All right, what's after that? Uh, Samuel. Yeah, Samuel. All right, you got first and second Samuel. After that, we hitting the ground running at that point. You know what I'm saying? Then we get into the history. A real history. It's, it's history we know people familiar with. Once you once you get over into, really, Joshua. You know what I'm saying? Once you get into Joshua, people, you know what I'm saying? People stop being familiar. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, people are pretty familiar with the law and all that. They don't know the details. Of that's why that's why we spend so much time because I want, I want to make sure that we understand the details of the law. You know what I'm saying? And we still, we, we really still have a whole lot more commandments to go. So, really, I'll take that back. We're not, we're not going to be done. We, we're good with the narrative, but I still want to read through all the commandments, all of them, and just to make sure that we, we, we capture everything. So, it's a lot of stuff we've skipped so far, but we'll go, we'll go back and read through the commandments, uh, at least most of them. Make sure we get a good understanding of what the God, most high God requires of us. So I ask again, any questions? All right, let's go. Uh, baby, can you?